دينكم نعم طيب you ready and no preservatives in our meat though no preservatives in the meat though can I add no preservatives in the question either okay thank you good question everybody hear the question no. questions about the meat the meat where's the beef All right the meat Let, let's 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 end it here let it be known this is the last time I'm answering this question. Last time. I said we should have an M&M &M concert. Music and meat. <laughs> and another M, mortgages. Yes. Seal the deal. Well, that's a good question, alhamdulillah. But this is the last time I'm answering this question. And you ask me a question again next time, it's on. See you in the parking lot. <laughs> Pod the trunk. Eat a protein bar. Anyway. Protein shake is better though. Protein bar too much fat, right? Right, right, sorry, shake. Shake for the shake. So, <laughs> her question is, the difference of the scholars about eating the meat outside. non the bihami. Don't say haram meat. Don't say haram meat. I'm, I'm happy how you worded the question. Okay, you a lawyer? Okay. So, don't say haram meat. Okay. Scholars, they differ on this. And they will not stop differing. And you're not going to find one answer. And this fa falls under what's called Al-Amr Ishtihadi. An issue where the independent usage of a lawyer's mind is acceptable to give the ruling to you. Imam al-Shafi said, Inna al-Masail Ishtihadi la tunkaru bil yad. Al-Shafi said, Inna al-Risala, Inna al-Masail al-Ishtihadi la tunkaru bil yad. Rahimahullah. He said, This type of issue should not be forbidden with the hand. The scholars, they differ because we have two opposing texts. What is it called? Ta'arud in usul al-fiqh. Ta'arud. Ta'arud means two contradictory texts. One text says, for example, in Surah, the sixth chapter of the Qur'an, وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا Don't eat from what Allah's name was not pronounced on. Khalas? That's one verse. A clear, the mafhum of the verse is, it's forbidden for you to eat meat that Allah's name wasn't pronounced on. But then we have Surah Al-Ma'idah, Third verse or fourth verse? Fourth verse. Al-yawm wa lakum al-tayyibat. The fourth verse in Surah Al-Ma'idah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says this day, the tayyibat, the good things been made halal for you. وَطَعَامُ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ حِلُّ لَكُمْ وَطَعَامُكُمْ حِلُّ لَهُمْ And the food of the people of the book has been made permissible for you, and your food permissible for them. So now we have two contradictory verses. It's called ta'arud. One verse says, don't eat the meat. That Allah's name hasn't been pronounced on. The other verse says, what? The food of the people of the book is permissible for you. The argument that they are different than the people of the book in those days is not acceptable. Because their aqidah is the same aqidah that they had. Clearly mentioned in the Quran, don't say that Allah is three. Don't say that Jesus is the son of God. They said Maryam is the... All that's mentioned in the Quran. So that argument is not strong. But the scholars differed on this issue. The Ahnaf, the Hanafis, and the Shafis, they said khalas. Based on our understanding of these two verses, it's not acceptable for you to eat meat that's not been, Allah's name has not been pronounced. So the, the verse about the people of the book is restricted by the other verse. You got it? You with me, sister? The verse that says, don't eat meat unless Allah's name is pronounced on it, restricts the generality of the meaning that you can eat from the people of the book. Okay, you can eat from the people of the book's food. So you can eat from their food as long as it's slaughtered. That's how they understand it. The others said the opposite. That restriction doesn't apply. That, that order not to eat the meat that Allah's name has not been pronounced on is restricted by letting you eat the meat of who? So they understand it in the opposite direction. You with me? So in that situation, in that situation, the Muslim is free to choose. And there's an axiom in Islamic law that says you should not go to someone and correct them for this. It's not a munkar. It doesn't fall under what's known as a munkar. 
according to the scholars of usul al-fiqh. You should not go to them, although there are some immature people maybe, uh, they are very quick to give fatwa some time and they have a lot of zeal. They will run to people and say, this is haram meat and this or this. We should avoid that. This shouldn't even be a discussion in the community. Man. But because we have a community that lacks literacy, lack basic literacy, you find these kind of arguments taking place. So you, you do what you like. The Madikis, they say it's makruh. It's disliked. And that's based on the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, when those people just became Muslim, sent him some food. And they didn't learn yet about the rulings of how to slaughter meat. So the companion said to the Prophet ﷺ, these people, uh, they just became Muslim. They will not have said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Fa, yani, the Prophet said, say Bismillah. The third or the fourth point is that we have to be careful sometimes in saying that the culture changes the rulings. The culture changes the rulings. We're in a different culture, it changes the rulings. Because the ulama, they differ. Is culture independent source of law? No. Culture in Islamic law is like spice on the food. So the Malikis, we have an uh, uh, axiom in Islamic law that says, Al-Urfu Kashart. That the custom of a people is like a condition for something. I'll give you an example. Let's say that I rented an apartment from your sister, okay? And the custom here in America is that you give me the furniture with the apartment, just as an example, right? Then I move to Egypt. And say you live in Egypt, and I rent an apartment from you, and I think, hey, you're gonna give me the furniture. But the custom in Egypt is not to give the furniture. So after I make the contract with you, and I pay everything, then I go to the house, and I try to sit down, I fall on the floor, say, where's the sofa? Then I go to you and say, hey, you played me, you're trying to cheat me, where's my furniture? Now we go to a faqi, a qadi. What's going to decide this issue is the custom. What's the custom of the people? What's the custom of the... Like if the mahar, and this is never going to happen in America, but if for some reason we forgot to say how much is the mahar, right? What would settle the dispute is the, the norm of the people around us, the custom of the people around us. So culture plays a role as a secondary source of law, not as an independent source of law. Yes, Habibi. Last question. My, my brother worked in a meatpacking plant for about five years. My mother was a personal director of a pork corporation. Okay. It is against FDA regulations to do that. You can't do that. Number two is the Muslim is not asked to go into these things. The Muslim is not. So, for example, in Muwatta of Imam Malik, rahimahullah, when uh, Amr ibn As and Omar came to this place of water, and Amr asked him, hey, did any animals drink from this before we're going to drink from it? And Omar said, don't answer him. Don't answer him. We've not been asked to go into these kind of issues. Right? So, it, like, that doesn't mean if you go to a restaurant. Now, restaurants are a little different. Yeah. You, you have to ask. You have to ask, right? But as far as these big plants and stuff, man, if they're doing that, they're going to be shut down. They're going to be shut down. That doesn't mean that. Yeah. 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 yeah well, if you physically see it, that's one thing. If you want to ask, that's one thing. I mean, if you see it with your own eyes, brother, that's it. Hold on. Ahsan? No, there's no Ahsan. There's no Tarjih. He's asking which one is better. Well, you cannot say which one's better here. If somebody, for example, let's say somebody, they're, they're in their taqwa, and they want to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, maybe Ahsan for him not to eat it. But somebody who converted to Islam like us, and he goes home, and his mother says, Here baby, here's 17 ounce steak just for you. No, haram! <laughs> it's not better for us. And that's the problem. And this is where culture and custom comes into play. When you have a convert community who are given a bunch of fatwas from Najd. Right? And what those fatwas do is, they create, I'm teasing him because he studies in Medina. What happens is, or, or Azhar as well, what happens is you have a bunch of social fatwas that were given in Egypt or Saudi Arabia or Pakistan or Indonesia and then given to me and him to take home to my mother who's a non-Muslim. Now this is where we have culture. And even for you with your co-workers, if there's lax in the law that allows us to have some flexibility without violating the authority of texts, then we should have that, that, that privilege to, to have some, I don't want to use the word liberal, but some relaxing or relaxation in the law. And that's why Hassan al-Basri said, Anas la min al-tanfis. Imam Hassan al-Basri, he said what? 
He said, people, men, they have to have a time to rest. And Sufyan al-Tawri, rahimahullah, he says something remarkable. He said, as for hardship and difficulty on the people, this is for anyone. But as for facilitation and making things easy, this is the role of the fuqaha, the role of the scholars, right? So that's where culture comes into play. When we bring in, for example, imported social fatwas, right, that don't have any textual base or based on ishtihadiyat, based on independent exercise of the mind of a scholar, which is 95% of the rulings in Islamic law, by the way, are not textual based. But they're based on the mind of a, of a lawyer, and then you put that in America. Now you're going to have problems. Problems. Last question. Oh, bro, I'm sorry, brother. And hey, when I leave, don't come. I got a question, Imam. I got, no, 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 no. We're done with questions. Right, protein shake? How long was this? How long was this low cardio workout? Oh, there you go. It's time to stop. Yes, sister. That's the Hanafis, man. Look, give, it to, give all your seafood to us, Malikis. We eat everything. MashaAllah. Welcome to the Maliki Medha, brothers. Right? You Hanafi brothers, I know you don't like your shrimp. Send your shrimp to me. The lobster, send it to me. Crawdads? I don't know about no crawdads. Yes, sir. No, no, man. The Prophet said uh, uh, about, about when he was asked about Al Bahar, he said, uh, he said, the water of the sea is pure and its meat is pure. Hadith from Bukhari and Muslim. Super Sahih. Shukran, Zakallah, khair for your time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this community. Wallahi, I cannot to Shaykh. Wallahi, the protein Shaykh said, Bas, TK, Ta. Zindagi, Babagani, Shamindagi. Last question, okay. His brother had his hand up since. Yeah, that's the so sunnah of the prophet. Like so the prophet, he's asking a question about your finger in, in the salah. Sometimes you see people doing like this. Sometimes you people doing like this. All these have sound narrations. The one that doesn't is the sorry. Is the one people go like this. There's no, there's no, there's no sunnah for that hadith. But what, what there is a, a base is the, either to go like this is related by Imam Muslim, the Sahih, and, a, and then you have the Maliki school who also has another sound hadith that says go like this because the Prophet said when you do like this, it's like you hit shaitan. So these are authentic hadith. But don't do it so much you disturb your neighbor, man. You're not, a, you're not at the club, man. You're in the masjid. Zakallah khair, salam alaikum. Subhanakallah, wa alhamdulillah, 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 wa